Hello. I'm Tim Rogers. Uh, this is twitch.tv slash Kotaku. We're here on the title screen of Dragon Quest XI. Echoes of an elusive Age. Age is Japanese for fried. That's a joke that I like half wrote in my script for my review and then didn't uh, didn't finish writing it because that would have been a bad idea. This is the city of uh, Puerto Valor, which is called Saltigo in the Japanese version. Maybe Puerto Valor is a pretty good name. Port Valor. Valor, actually. So they call the main character the Luminary in the English version. In the Japanese version, he's called Yusha, which simply means a uh, brave person, brave one, or valorous one. So having a city with a name like Valor in it is, is kind of... It's kind of on brand with Dragon Quest. Listen to this beautiful introductory music. Um, this is the symphonic, the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra. And if you love the intro movie of this game, it'll just load up right after this. And the title screen actually changes multiple times in the game over the course of the game. It's is a, a Dragon Quest staple. Um, here's a little thing that it took me a while to notice. Anybody watching? The very first person you see in this intro. See the red skirt and the boots? Oh, that's a slime. That's Veronica. The very first person you see is Veronica, the little tiny wizard. But she's an adult in the intro of the game. In case anyone didn't get that who's been playing the game. Who here watching is, is playing the game? Shout me out. And uh, I'm going to load up a, uh, a mid-game save. So many spoilers in this intro. They spoiled that there's a baby. Well, we've got the Washington Post shouting me out in the chat. Um, the Washington Post is saying that its name is Gene. We're just going to go ahead and presume that it's the whole Washington Post. Though, how you doing, Gene? There's my buddy Cam. Have you noticed he is exactly the hero from Dragon Quest VI? There's Veronica in her small form. This is my best friend, Silvando. And, uh, it's Rab and Jade. Or Martina, as I call her. Because that's her name in the Japanese version. It's very hard for me to, uh, detach the Japanese names from my brain having such an experience playing the game in that language. All this CG, uh, a lot of this actually isn't in the game. Some of it is, but most of it's not. So, a lot of these sweet CG shots are just for this intro. Which I find kind of cool. Like this. This isn't the plot point of the game. It's just like a regular enemy and they're just fighting him. I'm not going to spoil which of these scenes are in the game and which are there's the hero and his best friend. We're going to go ahead and just skip past uh, the rest of this intro because, I mean, come on. I'm now going to enter the game. I've pressed the correct button, the X button. So I'm going to load up a... Uh, uh, this is an, a mid-game save, I would call this. I have a save here that's only 14 hours and 45 minutes in, and I'm on level 19. And we can load that one up. We can load it up. Uh... Or we can load up 4956, um, level 37. So this is technically mid-game. I think this is uh, it's right about at the midpoint of the game. And it's right before a major story event. I won't dare show you the story event. I would not dare show you the story event. Though I could travel anywhere in the world and we could hang out with any sort of people that we want. And I could show anybody whatever they want. Or we can do this earlier save and experience a kind of a dumb story event that I like. Because I've got it saved right here. I'm not going to go to my first two pages of saves because the very names of the files are, are spoilers. Anybody have a suggestion? Anybody have one? Come on, my friends. Well, if it's cool cities you want to see... Oh, no, and then we have someone saying, I'm a fan of dumb story events. Ah, this dumb story event's pretty dumb and pretty good. Yeah, you know what? We're going to load up the mid-game save because 
the dumb story event is really something that you might want to enjoy for yourself. Oh, no, don't read this. Don't look at the screen. Don't look at it. Don't look at the screen. Twangerine says, uh, cool outfits. So actually, what I did was I loaded the save up a couple minutes ago and I took us out of the dungeon with the story event and uh, with, with the major story event and then I took the cool outfits off of everybody. So none of my dudes are wearing cool outfits. You can see my hero though, uh, quite stylishly. He's wielding a, a sword. That's a platinum sword and a, uh, a falcon blade. So, that's not bad, huh? So here's what we've got. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just show you my info. You will see that it's 49 minutes and 57 seconds. It's about 50 hours into the game. I've encountered about half of the monsters that are total in the game. 178 out of 394. 310 out of 725 items. Uh... 35 mini medals. That's almost as many as you can get in the first half of the game. And, uh, yeah, I have, God, I've, I was going to be like, let's do a quest, but I've unlocked all of them. This is very much my, my completionist run of the game. So it's looking at like about 100 hours if you want to get absolutely everything, which is why we're at 50 hours and. I want to say this is like exactly half of the game that I've played through. So I've, I've taken us to this region, which uh, it's a very neutral. This is fairly early in the story. You arrive at this town. One thing you might not know if you haven't played the Japanese version is that in the English version, the horse is like a tiny bit faster. Just a little bit. And I, I like this region because it has a sort of a grandiose feeling. I saw some criticism of the game that it's not a total open world. This is what I think of random encounters. Uh, there are no random encounters. You can see all the enemies. And once you're on a high enough level, you can just blast right through them on your horse. I just ran into that signpost. So, look at that. How's that for fighting? Now it's very lonely here. You don't get experience points from blasting enemies around. Should we just do this? Should we just blast dudes forever? Should I fight one of these guys? I'm gonna fight one of these guys. I'll show you my, my buds. I've taken all of their magical special outfits off though. Because the outfits, I just wanna say, I just wanna say the outfits. No, it's not giving me XP. Um, to get XP, you have to fight enemies. And I like to get XP through fighting bosses. So my characters are very over leveled. Okay, no, they're not over leveled. They're, they're slightly over leveled for like where you would naturally be at this point in the game because I recorded a lot of battles uh, for the purpose of making my review video this is my this is my review save so I'm gonna fight this guy you can get a preemptive attack which decreases the amount of HP that they have starting out so that's nice and uh, I've got it on the free battle camera so I can rotate it however I want though on my current save my, my most recent save which is about 80 hours in that particular uh, save, I've got it on the classic camera, which I find slightly better. I just, I, I like the classic camera because I'm old school and it reminds me exactly of Dragon Quest VIII. So this is my preferred party, um, by which I mean this is the weakest possible party you can have. I don't like when she says, don't say I didn't warn you after like a minute of silence. We completely decimated those enemies. Um, yeah, we, we're really, really overleveled for this exact region. Though, these are my buds. You'll notice I have Serena, who is very much classed as a healer support character, wielding a spear because I've gone, I've gone all bonkers in on her spear skills. And I've gone bonkers in on Rab's healing skills, so he's a healer. And Silvando is my physical attacker. That, that experience points will do nothing for us. Where'd my horse go? Oh, it's over here. You can actually fight enemies while you're on the horse, except you can't get the preemptive slight HP reducing strike. So, for those of you hoping that you can ride in on the horse into the town, no. Billy leaves the horse there. Billy is the name of uh, 
name of my guy. So I I always I keep calling him Bilby though, even though his name is Billy. So we're in the town of Puerto Valor. We have a question from the Washington Post. The Washington Post. Uh, yes, what's your question? Uh, oh, okay. Do I have to have four characters in the party at the same time? Unfortunately, yes. Emphasis on the f the four. And unfortunately, you can't you can't solo play. Now his name is not Billy Bonkra at this time. So here we've got a chill dude right away. Uh, we haven't gotten. This is how far we've gotten into the town before encountering a chill bud. So there he is. This guy's just. He's just, like, everywhere he goes, he's just hanging out. You see this guy a lot. Hey, what's up, buddy? Our town is famous for its casino. He's got some concentration to be able to play music while, uh, while talking. Little merchant guy. These guys are all uh, in stature and in style, reminiscent of the merchant Torneco. Our buddy Rab is also... I want to get your face, bro. Very stern, tiny-eyed individual. Look at that fez. All right, you may go, son. He's my son. Andy Andy 58 asks if the protagonist has a canonical name. He actually does not. The protagonist in every Dragon Quest does not have a canonical name. In the promotional materials, he is usually referred to as the name of the game spelled out. So in the Japanese version, I just broke those pots without even thinking or mentioning that I was going to do that. This guy's cool, too. Hold on. He's got a mask on. Ooh. I'm too close for the camera. No. Stop it. Come back. Cool, dude. So in the in the promotional materials for the Japanese version of the game, the main character would be called Eleven. Idebu. So usually it's the number of the game. This is a precocious child. As you know, if you've ever read a manga, I'm pr I, I mispronounced manga on purpose. If you've ever read a manga by Akira Toriyama, you know that children are, by nature, always precocious. They can't stop being precocious. So this town is uh, it's just an immediately impressive town. Yellow and white checkerboard floors. Feels very Spanish, which I like. Checkerboard in here as well. This is sort of a... Yeah, this is the hotel casino. Diligently sweeping the floor. A maid in green. Does Dragon Quest XI have a monster arena? We're being asked. Oh boy, does it ever. We're not going to be able to show that on the stream, though, because of the nature of this save. Uh, it's like a very dormitory-looking room. I can't imagine staying in this hotel. That's, that's for a good reason, though. If you ask the receptionist downstairs, she tells you that uh, students from the nearby academy come here on vacation. So this is like a, a youth hostel. There are actually two hotels in this town. And this one has a little kitchen, sort of a cafeteria-style kitchen. Here we have a man and a lady eating. Her... Uh, Fork is poised above some oysters, it looks like. Or those mussels. I don't know my shellfish. I'm sorry. So, and then this this guy, like, this is a, he's assuming a kind of a hypermanly posture. He's got one hand on the table, and the other hand is just wielding this fork, properly gripping it as though he went to finishing school. However, the hand on the table would indicate some kind of a, what do you call it? A rough rough demeanor like like he uh he, he maybe didn't grow up in a farm but he's been to one you know what i mean let's talk to him and see what he says we just got married so we decided to come here on our honeymoon i must say i think we made the right choice the pace of life is so relaxed here it wouldn't be a bad place to build a house in fact who here has been on a vacation to a tropical island first of all i assume that's a meat pie Twandarine says there's definitely muscles. Yeah, I figured there were muscles. Um, yeah, I've sailed through the sea gates before. Every time you go on to a tropical island, what's... I feel like you're just not chill if you don't think, I would live here. The question is, why don't I live on a tropical island? Good question. 
Um, I've developed some video games before, and I've developed some video games in the AAA in uh, Unreal. And I'm just going to say, uh, I see what's happening here. This slime sitting on top of this dresser. The level designer figured, you know, it was written somewhere that this slime was the innkeeper. And then they thought, so someone had to elevate him up to the level of the counter, and they put him on top of this this dresser. And then when the level artist went through, they were just like, dude, that's hilarious. I'm going to leave it that way. And then they just left it that way. I'm not going to talk to every NPC. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to do that. And also, that would be spoiling it for you. What's this little thing? Oh, it disappeared. I guess I'll never know what that was. I feel like I've seen it before, though. This old man wearing tinted glasses. I believe this old man, whose side quest is he wants you to craft a bunny girl outfit and make Jade wear it. I believe he's a reference to Yuji Hori. So this is my instinct of having played the Japanese version. This, this girl's just sitting. She's just sitting and chilling. What a, what a relaxed posture. And let's go ahead and say it. What a lovely view. Gaze upon the view. My experience playing the Japanese version is such that I... I can't, I can't help just kind of running at the normal speed. Chris Redfield, I have spoken to every NPC in this game already. I don't need to do it again for the purpose of a stream. Um, I love these people sitting up here. So this lady, interestingly, at night is replaced with a different NPC who's wearing sunglasses at night, which I think is cool. The Tiki Torch is lit up. Little hut. You can go inside this little hut. Like, who needs the Witcher 3, am I right? Go inside buildings and stuff in here. That's a joke. You know what? I have not played The Witcher 3. I've read the books. I've played The Witcher 1. I'm going to play The Witcher 3 as soon as I get my Xbox One X. This door, you need a, the magic key to get into. I'm not going to tell you when you get the magic key or what's in there. Just that you should remember that. I pointed that out in my tips video, which is... Uh, Oh, it actually erases the red lock from the door. You can see there's another lock. So that's for when I get the uh, the final key. The final key. Just look at the interiors of these buildings. It's just the interiors are lovely. I'm going to go in here. Let's go inside. Oh, shoot. Look at that. Just a beautiful room. It's a very, very Spanish style here with the, uh, the bright colors. You got the green and the blue. This is the only town that has sort of a color scheme like that. You can see these tiles. Let's open that up. Nothing in there. There's nothing in there because Bilby's already ransacked every, every single town in this game. Just completely owned every town. Yeah, Dragon Quest towns are chill as heck. They're the chillest. They're so chill, you can chill in church. There's quite a, a variance in the priests as well. You have different types of priests and monks and nuns manning the churches, which I find charming. Here's one of my favorite NPCs. The nun with glasses. I'm such a weirdo. I know where every NPC is in the game. I need you to look at me, friend. My friend. No. Can you look this way? There she is. She's the one nun in the game who's wearing glasses. Such a pleasant smile. It's almost as if God told her something pleasant recently. Let's get out of here. You can't always jump over the ledges, though in this church you can. Yeah, I know which churches have ledges you can jump over. There's nothing else in this town. That's a joke. There's so much stuff in every town. Um, this beautiful Spanish villa with these, if we were playing this uh, on a massive 4K TV, the reflections off of these flowers would be blinding. That's a treasure chest. I haven't gotten it for a reason. I'm gonna get it now though, just to show you what that's like. It's a sprig of pretty bitsy. It's a crafting ingredient. So we have this Spanish villa. 
And we have some knights training in the yard. They're, they're boys now, but if they keep at it, they'll be men soon. Not this one, though. Teacher looks on sternly. What's in this room? Can't go in that door. Not right now. Off limits. Liquid Sword, uh, 89. I had to lean into the monitor to see her name. Asks, is there any crazy demon god type JRPG craziness like what happens in FF games? Uh, buddy, I hate to break it to you. FF games stole that from Dragon Quest. And, uh, if you've ever played a Dragon Quest, then you have experienced a roller coaster of trials, tribulations, ups, and downs in the story. This game lacks absolutely none of those, uh, of those twists. Oh, yes, uh, there's, uh, as, uh, Laser Lambert points out, they did change the religious iconography in this game instead of sort of a pitchfork as it has been in past games for a pretty interesting reason. In this one, they made this sort of three-pointed cross. It's a very weird-looking thing. It looks kind of like an incomplete peace sign. Oh, I love this town. There certainly is nothing else to do in this town, though. Oh, wait. I just remembered. The trauma had put me off because I've screamed so much because of this place. So many screams have I screamed. So many screams. Let's go on in and scream again. The casino is a place where you can bet a lot of money. And you can lose a lot of money. Let's go play. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a hand of poker. I have 854 coins. I have more in the bank. I believe I have like 50k in the bank. We can't stay in this casino for the entire stream. I mean, we could. Though, here's what we're going to do. West writes, uh, or Laser Lambert says, I got five of a kind and doubled it three times. So what, you got four of a kind and a joker? That's wild. How many times did you double it? Double it like a million times? Wait, you doubled it three times. Did you quit after the third double or nothing? Double or nothing is, is hair raising. I don't have any coins. Excuse me, miss. I would like some coins. Oh, wait, I have 172 coins. Uh, cash me. Cash me in. Just put me in. Okay. And I have 14 coins left. This is good. Um, one, to, one token poker. I'm not going to play one token. Each play, each hand costs 100 tokens. Uh, uh, she won't let me play. 10 tokens, let's go. Let's go. Riot Vale says, I really enjoyed the review. Thanks for watching the review. I had a really good time making that review. Liquid Sword 89 asks, is there a cool villain in this game? And if so, is it cooler than Sylvando? The villain in this game is, I think, my favorite Akira Toriyama character design ever. So we put 100 tokens in. Ah, oh, heck. Ah. Oh. This is sad. This is a, uh, this is one of those moments in gambling where you're just like, ah. I mean, I don't want the three. What do I keep? Let's play some poker, everybody. What do, you, what do I keep? This is like the worst hand. I could get a straight 
if I gotta. I get a 10 or a. Reroll everything. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So here's like, I mean, I don't, there's, I can't, I can't deal with any of this. There's, there just, wow, ice cold. Absolute coldness. Do I keep it on a hundred coins? I'm, I'm not going to kill myself. Let's do it slowly. Okay, Jack Jack Joker. That's three of a kind. That's three of a kind, my friends. We did it. Uh everything else is trash. If I get a fourth joke, uh, Jack. It's three of a kind. Okay. I don't wanna do it. Ten tokens. You wanna play double or nothing? I would be an idiot if I did not. Spoon branch, no, they do not unfortunately have Texas hold. Five. Can I pick a card higher than five? I know there are a lot of cards higher than five. I bet this one is. Oh! Daddy got the double. All right. Double or nothing. Um, shall we? Yeah. No, we're not going to stop doubling. Six. Fun thing about double or nothing, and especially the fun thing about doing playing casino double or nothing on a, on a video game stream, is no one can criticize my skill here. If nowhere else, if nowhere else, you can't question my ability here. Double or nothing is a, it's a wild game, you know? Um, I like this third card. Oh! Okay, okay. I had, I picked the, I, I, I the card I liked was the absolute wrong one. Okay. Okay. Ah. Okay, so this is tall. I'm going to take the one that was bad last time because I like... Oh. I like thinking the things that change. Show me the other cards, man. Each one of these uh, double or nothings is... Uh, this is bad. Yeah, Daddy's going to be here all night staring at this one. The dealer's like, uh, sir. Which card do I take? Everybody tell me. I need one suggestion. One, two, three, or four. One, two, three, or four. Somebody needs to tell me. I'm not, a, I, I can't, I can't choose. Far right, okay. Yeah. I'm glad I went with the first option because the second one would have resulted in me dead. We're doubling it again. We're doubling it again. Because we can't stop. All right. Tell me, tell me, <laughs> what's, what's next? Are you telling me not to double or nothing? No, no, we have to double. We double until we die. This is Gambler's Ruin. So we're, we're, in, we're illustrating the principle of, of Gambler's Ruin today. Every time I'm offered double or nothing, I gamble. Eventually, I'm dead. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got two, far left, two, 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 two. Everyone's saying two, one, two. I see more twos, I'm going for two. You freaks. <laughs> Do we wanna play again? Of course I wanna play again. All right, give me the deal, give me the deal. I got a pair of threes, a king, and an ace. Queen, king, ace. If only I can get a ten and a jack. You got a double or nothing every time. All right. Tell me what I should do. Tell me what I should do, everyone. Playing a little bit of idiot poker. Yeah, give me another one. Ooh, two pair. I got 
All right, give me, give me a three. Give me a, one of those. Oh, full house. That house is, uh, house is a little crowded. No, I don't always keep the pair. This isn't real. <laughs> it's, it's, it, this isn't real, and I'm not saving the game. So, uh, let's, uh, uh, what do we got? What do we got? Okay. I'm going with the third one. Oh, that's a little bit overdoing it, my friend. Uh, round number two. Oh! We're going far right. Or the third one. Oh! Jack on top of the six. That's good. 400 tokens. Home to daddy. Number five. Number five. Slime on the five. What do we got? Number three. Number three. Number three. Snap. King, seven, nine, six, queen. Oh, my God. That was... It's really stacked in my... F Woo! Oh, the king is dead. Um, which one of these is an ace? Is one of them the ace? Which one of these is the ace? One, three, four, two. <laughs> that's that's all of them. What if all four of them are aces? What are the chances of that? We're gonna take this one. Daddy's dead. Oh man. Ah, uh, I had one. I had one option. All right, give me another one. Give me another one. Two, three, four, six, nine. Crikey. Um. Uh. <sighs> Wait, so hold on. I'm getting I'm getting some mixed feedback here. Nine for the five. Trash it. Kill the nine. You want me to kill the nine? We're hoping for... Oh, we're hoping for a five. We're hoping for a five. Give me a five. Give me five. Give me five. Ah. That almost looked like something. Give me another one. That's a pair. All right. As per the audience's encouragement, I will keep the pair. Um. Oh, sorry. Should I keep the ace? Keep the ace. Keep the ace. Yeah, I'm going to keep the three. Okay. Well, that was worthless. Give me another one. Oh, two, three, five, nine, ace. Crikey. This sucks. We're going to keep the ace. Go for the flush. What? What flush? Okay. Okay. We'll keep the shields. We're going to keep the shields. Three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Oh! I feel like the game was giving me that one. Double or nothing up to 60. Let's go. Oh, it's a treasure card. Win double or nothing three times, and the treasure is yours. All right. We're going to go for number three. Cause, oh, yeah. Again, a little bit overdoing it. 60 tokens. Give me that. Give me that. Yeah, give me another double. Double me up. Ah, oh, freak. Well... Daddy's dead. I need two more double or nothing wins. Keep the pair. Is that what everybody encourages? You all want me to keep the pair? Ah! Everybody tell me what to do. 
We're gambling together. Just the pair. Just keep the pair. There we go. If I would have kept the nine as well, we would have had a, a pretty sweet hand. Give me that dub. Give me that dub. All right. We're almost there. We almost got the treasure box. Nine. I'm going to go for the third one. It's king. Doubled it up. Give me what's in the box. Give me the box. Give me the box. Yeah, give me another dub. I'm going to go with the third one again because that's my lucky card. All right. 80 tokens. This is good. Double or nothing. One more time. Yeah, do it one more time. 160 tokens. That's baby league. Seven. Kaboom. 160. Double or nothing up to 320. Let's double it. Ten. This is the only time you feel alive. Ah, uh, we're dead. I had two choices there. What's in the box? Piece of even cloth. That sucks. No, I'm not going to play any more poker. That's it. That's enough of that. Poker sucks. No, poker rules. What you do is if you ever win a lot of... Uh, spend a whole bunch of money to buy a lot of coins. They're 20, 20 gold each. Once you buy casino coins, you can't do anything outside of the casino with them. You can never change them back to money in Dragon Quest. So... They can only be used to purchase things at the casino store. Let's get out of this town. Everybody mentioned, do we want to see that girl? That lady from the beginning? Want to go see her? She's in Galapagos City. You'll notice I have all four pages of... Uh, all four pages of stuff. For her. We're going to go there. Beam Bill be up. Yeah, thanks for coming on in to the stream, everybody. I mean, are there sport? Don't read the loading screen tips. We're going to go check this lady out. There's also a nice restaurant in Galapagos that I like. So let's... Uh, uh, I like this. So first of all, Galapagos has a lot of my favorite NPCs. So you'll see there's this meat table playing on PlayStation 4. I wonder if the meat looks any better on PC. I don't have the PC version. Buddy, I'm going to need you to move. This is one of my favorite NPCs as well. Look at this dude with the monocle. Now I like this more Tornado looking dude. Taloon, as he was called in the US version. So this town is very, very desert-like. You've got these nice rugs. Oh, the body disappears when the camera's too close. So, I really like this NPC. I like this NPC a lot. So, you come up, first of all, the, the element of surprise is interesting because the way this room is blocked out, you, uh, you come in. Oops, sorry. Uh, you come in, you go up the stairs, you rotate the camera as you go up, you rotate again. And then, there he is. You see him in the corner. Like, he's like hidden as you ascend the stairs. So you get this sudden shock. Like, what is this guy doing, right? And then, you go up and talk to him. And, and he's a, he's a, he's a cultist of the evil lord. Soon, evil will arrive at last. Interesting. So he knows evil will arrive. But will it? You're going to have to play the game to find out. So, this restaurant is chill. I love this dude. I used this dude in my review video, if you remember that. In one particular shot. He's, he looks like he's just monstering over a big fish. And some uh, spaghetti with meatballs. And then some other pasta. Looks like it's got like a... Sort of some fish eggs on it. Sort of a, a pink sauce. Now, uh, this girl, she's got muscles, and she's got muscles. 
She's dressed in the outfit befitting a a fighter from Dragon Quest III. It's a nice little callback to Dragon Quest III there. And she is eating, by all accounts, a margarita Neapolitan pizza. I mean, that owns. And then now let's, this is the restaurant that I referred to, which has another NPC that I love, which is this dude. Sunglasses bartender. You can watch this man over here meticulously polishing a goblet. It's not a euphemism. This dude here looks like he had a hard day at work. Nothing like a cold beer after a long day of hard work. Pretty good. He's got a, a, a croissant. And it looks like he's got... What kind of cheese is that? Is that Gouda? And we got this lady telling me greetings. Oh, you can horse race here in this town. I've already completed all the horse racing. So if you're playing the game, here's something I'm going to recommend. Once you finish the horse race segment in this town, you really want to go back and do the optional horse races because you unlock a new outfit for the hero by doing that. I'm not going to show you the new outfit. I'm just going to tell you that that's how you get it. If people in the chat beg me hard enough, I will show you some outfits, but I will ask everyone else watching to, to close their eyes so that they uh, don't get spoiled. I don't want to spoil anybody. This guy here uh, tasks you to use a bow gun to uh, a crossbow to go find all these little targets. And, uh, yeah, there's a message of love and marksmanship. I, uh, I already shot down all his targets because I'm an idiot and I just knew where they all were. It's night chasing these kids. I'll spoil it. The outfit that Billy gets is the outfit that, that uh, he wears on the horse when he rides the horse. So that's cool. So here we go. Here we are. You aren't allowed in the circus because the circus is, is an event. Here's my, here's my chill friend. She's in a parlor. So here's the thing. Back in the Dragon Quest days... Uh, wait, how did I get that screenshot that I used at the intro? I did it by standing on the sofa. So, Back in the Dragon Quest days, they didn't have television. Back in the time of the Dark Lord and the Luminary. So... Uh... Basically, you had to stare at an empty sofa while you while you snacked. Or invite a friend over. I'm a big fan of these authentic-y desert-style windows, which have shutters to block out sand and to keep the room dark, as it is the sun that is hotter than anything else in a place like this. Kind of like a, a default Unreal text like material on there for that reflection you see the reflection on the ground it's a beautiful room this guy's a butler so see this guy has a story the lady of the house is a keen collector of classic literature as her butler it often falls on me to do the collecting on her behalf many years ago she dispatched me to Arborea to pick up a particularly rare volume. At the time, I was aggrieved to be sent on such an arduous journey, but looking back now, it was quite the adventure. A little shade of uh, the remains of the day there. The butler who has never, never left the house, feeling uh, irked at having to leave the house, yet he turns into one of the most pleasant memories of his life. The Remains of the Day, a classic book. It's, 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 uh, that, that, that NPC is not really that reminiscent of The Remains of the Day at all. Chris Redfield says, You can't change your outfit? Question mark. No, you can change the heck out of your outfit. It's just uh, the, the outfits that you can buy are really... They're, they're difficult to come across. They're very rare. And when you get them, it 
it feels like a huge accomplishment. So, uh, I, I don't want to spoil them for anybody. Okay, I will show, I have a couple alternate outfits for everyone. I will show you one outfit for one character. So everyone in the chat, I need you all to suggest which of the seven main characters you want to see an alternate outfit for. And I will then choose one of those outfits. I will choose just one. We've got two Silvandos, one Martina, one Billy. Silvando's winning. What do you think of this palace? Isn't this dope? There's cats. But look at this. Bilby does not pet the cat. You know why? Because he doesn't care. He pets dogs and he pets horses, but he does not pet cats. So I believe this game has very clearly spoken its bias. We've got Silvando. Silvando, the main character. Martina. Oobly's asked, can you change the character you run around as? Yes, yes, you can. Oh, no, you can't. You're stuck running around as this guy. Which is why... Uh, why I, I saw it imperative to get a really good outfit for this dude. Do you guys want to see the king? It's real Game of Thrones. There's like four kingdoms with four kings and four thrones. So his queen is... Uh, I mean, you know, she's all right. You know? She's hanging out. And look how this horse racing track looms outside with the royal chairs to sit on for viewing the race. She's all right. But this king, dude, this guy's the man. I mean, look at this guy. That's a chill dude, man. Well, he's got a bit of a stern expression on his face, but... When he chills, he chills real hard. Chuck Banzai asks, is the cat thing in this city a deliberate reference to Egyptian cultures idolizing cats? I believe so. My dear friends, it is always a pleasure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got you, bud. So, there, they do, oh, I can't jump over the, the royal, the moat. See, you know you're chill when you have a moat, like, within your castle. Especially in the desert where water is such a scarce resource to be flaunting it so gregariously. It's the wrong adverb on purpose. Yeah, this city has the cats thing, but notice they also are really chill with horses. You really have to question any place that's chill with horses. Horses are sick. Hashtag truck hack. I'm going to break these, even though I've already gotten the treasure. Treasure doesn't refresh. I mean, it refreshes the spirit. In this grand hall of the castle, you can see. Some knights practicing. These guys are cool. Um, I don't know why I did that voice. I'm sorry. Can you fish in this game? Comes a question. No. No. I would tell you, but that would be a spoiler. Look at that. What do you think this bed is? About a California king? It's about a California king, I think. All right, everybody wants to see an outfit. I, I do not know if I saw a consensus. I, I, I don't know if there's a consensus on what kind of an outfit to see. Yes, those were the pots from the review. Oh, wait, are we talking about Game of Thrones? Westright says I think there's like two thrones in Game of Thrones tops. Because the Greyjoys have an inferiority complex. No, the Greyjoys have a throne. The Salt Throne. There's a throne in the Eyrie. Uh, and uh, there's there's a throne in Winterfell. It's just such a, such an honest throne. 
All right, I'm going to show you two outfits. I'm going to show you one for Silvando, and then I'm going to show you one for the hero. And the one for the hero, I just want to say, uh, it's it's sort of hard to get. It's not that hard to get, but it's sort of hard to get. And I would strongly recommend that you don't look. I'm going to give him a shield so that he looks even cooler when he gets it. I'm going to strongly recommend you don't look at the hero when I put the outfit on him. So I, uh, Silvando's already wearing the clothes. In order to switch his outfit, I need the complete set. So in order to change it, I need to put on the accompanying accessory. Now the way you get these, I'm going to go ahead and just give a brief primer. As I said in my tips video, you want to crush all the pots, read all the books, do all the quests. You will end up, if you do this, getting recipes that allow you to craft. So, and then when you can craft, you then need to find the ingredients to craft the thing. So you end up taking some time, and this is why one, if so inclined, could get to this point in the game in something like, I don't know, 25 hours or so you could get here. When I did my second JP playthrough, I speed ran it. Um, and I got to the first, the end of the first half of the game at about 25 and a half hours. This time I'm at 50 hours because I'm doing it, I'm going for that platinum. You know, I need that platinum trophy because I need it. We've got Trek, 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 Trek saying I have to wait for the Switch version. I probably shouldn't be here. I'm not spoiling anything. However, I am about to spoil some outfits. So don't look at the outfits. I'll let you know. So here it comes. I'm going to go ahead. See, oh, also when the Switch version comes out, I bet there's going to be more outfits. There's going to be a whole bunch of them. So I'm about to put an outfit on Silvando. This is my favorite outfit for Silvando. And it's also the only one that you can get in the first half of the game. So it's really sweet. And I like it a lot. Because his standard outfit is he's got this court jester thing going on. Right? And it's like... I mean, that's cool if that's your thing. But I think this outfit is, like, genuinely sweet. And yes, there is a Switch version coming. It's been announced. It was announced before they ever showed the game. So here it is. I'm putting the outfit on. You have five seconds. So close your eyes, everybody. And uh, here it comes. Five, four, three, two, one. So, I love this outfit. Like, I mean, he just looks really cool and honest here. He just looks like the kind of guy that he really is. He's, uh, you know, it's not the court jester thing. Look at that fighting posture. You're ready to dodge at a moment's notice. I wouldn't call this outfit hilarious. Let's give him a, uh, a slightly more appropriate sword. Uh, I think I have a... Yeah, here we go. So you'll notice some of my weapons are plus three. That's because I've crafted them up to the highest standard. You can rework items that you've crafted. And some of these do have upgrade versions. Weapons and shields and such always change their appearance. However, the outfit stuff, unfortunately, you don't have a million outfits. It would have been a lot of work for Mr. Toriyama to do that. Not sure if he actually designed all of these outfits by hand. Uh, the one I'm going to put on Billy, he definitely... That's definitely a work of Toriyama. So, Now, Billy, as in every Dragon Quest, it's almost as though the game... Uh, gives you a character in kind of a slightly stupid outfit so that you can be really excited. I've taken the outfit off of uh, Silvando, so don't worry. Um, we're now going to put an outfit on Bilby. And so Bilby's already wearing one of the pieces that he needs, and all I need to do is put on the other. So this is an armor you can unlock. I'm going to say a if you're really, really observant, 
you can get this armor about 20 hours into the game. If you've got all the characters in your party, you can get this armor. Okay? So... Yeah, I'm not going to put this Dragon Quest Eight outfit on because I just like this game too much. So here's here's the armor you get for winning the horse race. Who wants to see the horse race outfit? Close your eyes if you don't want to see it. I recommend this is the easiest outfit to get for Bilby. It looks like this. So he looks kind of cool. I think that's a sweet outfit. We're going to take it off though because I'm going to put on this is this is a big spoiler, man. Okay? So don't look at this. Don't look at this if you don't want something spoiled. Because he's going to look really, really different. And it, I will point out, it is not the final outfit in the game. So, there is a final... There is... As in every Dragon Quest, they, they give you kind of a dumb outfit. Because when you get all the way to the end of the game, you get this sweet outfit. If you are tough enough. And the sweet outfit that he gets is incredible. This is not it. The one I'm about to show you is just... It's the... You can get it about 20 hours into the game. So, 20 hours if you're really, really observant. If you feel like you, uh... Wire outfits, more of a spoiler than towns. Well, you get to all the towns in the story. You don't get to all the outfits. Uh, so I'm about to show the outfit. Everyone, turn away if you don't want to see it. I'm going to run around as it, too. So here it is. Five, four, three, two, one. So here he is. Um, I mean, this outfit is uh, straight up incredible. As you can see. Uh, Akira Toriyama definitely uh, designed this because... It's a, it's a very canonical outfit. I'm going to go outside of the town and wear it. And uh, we'll see what you all think then. And uh, yeah, so he looks pretty cool. He looks cool as heck. Um, I'm not going to say what it's a reference to. Though, if you've played some Dragon Quest games before, you can already see what this is a reference to. Does anybody in the chat think they know? I mean... This is a very clear homage to one exact character. So, it's pretty dope. And you can get this, again, if you have Rab and Jade in your party, you're definitely able to get this. That's all I'll say. Uh, it's very easy to miss. And uh, once you get it, it's very hard to craft. Uh, however, it's pretty cool. And I just kind of keep him wearing this for the rest of the game because I think... Oh, and, I mean, it shows up in cutscenes, too. So... Uh, yeah, you can see him wearing this in cutscenes. It's real fun to have him wear this in a cutscene and then have, like, a character be like, Oh, hey, kid. You think you're going to be all right? And it's like, man, you're talking to this dude who looks like the hardcorest bad butt in, like, the universe. Like, I mean, this guy looks wild. I'm going to remove the outfit now so that anyone just tuning in might, uh... Now, look at him. The man is dead, the child returns. So where else shall we go here in uh, Dragon Quest? Do you want to see my favorite town? Who wants to see my favorite town? Uh, let's see. We're going to go to another town. I mean, this game's just all about questing and chilling. And, uh, for me... So, okay, we're not, we're not showing the outfit. We're not... The outfit is gone. The outfit is off, by the way. So, like, uh... If, if you were turning away from the stream in fear of having an outfit spoiled, you can look back. It's okay. One thing I've done... Uh, yeah, this is my favorite town. It's the one that feels the most like a quake map. I want to live in a quake map. In real life. <laughs> I want... 
I, f I feel like my house would be a, my ideal house would be one that looks and feels like a quake map. Whenever I see like, for whatever reason, I see like a, a celebrity's mansion or whatever on Twitter. I'm just like, I wonder how much of a quake map that is. So this place is cool. This town's cool because it's like entirely indoors. So here's this character exists solely to make fun of the outfit of uh, the main character of Dragon Quest VIII, which I think is funny. Okay, not solely. He has a, a little plot. So the way this game goes, if you've ever played, if you play Dragon Quest VIII, it's, it's pretty close in terms of structure and pace to Dragon Quest VIII. So it also, however, has sort of an episodic feeling. The main character is uh, is on the run. He's a hunted and a wanted man. So he needs to escape from place to place. There's a sinister knight named Hendrik chasing your party. It's all very melodramatic. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of Game of Thrones in there. I happen to know uh, for a fact that a lot of Japanese video game developers love Game of Thrones. This is Sausage Lady. Performing the Sausage Lady animation. Really love this anime. It's one of my favorites. There's like four Sausage Ladies in the whole game. So I love it. So yeah. And the cancel button is also the jump button. So every time I cancel out of that menu, there's a high likelihood that I'm about to jump. Let's go back out into the city. Look at this. It's beautiful. They got this weird magic neon. Shops are all lit up inside. So as I'm saying, if you've played Dragon Quest VIII, it's close to that. If you've played Dragon Quest VII, which has a bunch of little episodes, it's also close to that. Because as our hero, Bilby, is on the run, every town he stops at, he ends up having to do something. Everybody gets ensnared. And, and they get they get just snagged in this uh, whatever story is befalling the people of the town. Here's a little area that I like. I like this area. <laughs> um, Cosmic Trash Can asks, could I enjoy the story even though I don't know anything about Dragon Quest? Absolutely. So. Dragon Quest uh, creator Yuji Hori and uh, artist Akira Toriyama and music composer were these guys scared to talk to this girl. These girls were, they performed, they're like famous fighters. And these guys are, they want to talk to them, but they know that they shouldn't because they'll get beat up. And also, you shouldn't just talk to somebody. This guy's chill. Redbeard McMeat Eater is his name. Redbeard McCarnivore. That's enough of that guy. Though. Oh, I keep pressing the. I keep clicking the left analog stick to run, because I think I'm playing the. I think I'm. I'm playing Call of Duty because this town just makes me feel like I'm in Call of Duty. Uh, the left analog stick is how you enter the first-person camera mode. Clicking it. He's like, please, sir, you're eating all of my food. Oh, oh, stop it. And then, oh, but it's all right. Oh, no, though. It's like, they make up your mind. Are you going to clap? Or are you going to... Oh, oh, my God. Dragon Ball. LMAO. Uh, man, you know how many comments on my review are like, Oh, uh, is that Android 17? Uh, it's like, yeah, uh, same artist, yeah. A lot of people being like, Did the, did, did the artist who, do, who did Dragon Ball work on this? I'm like, is that a joke? I think it's a joke. Um, so yeah, if you play Dragon Quest VII, you know that it's all about traveling in time to like an alternate time dimension to resurrect these islands to like repopulate the world map, which is neat. Um, and this game has sort of a sort of a pacing like that, where you're uh, where you're just uh, experiencing new stories and new places everywhere you go. Oh. 
some nice purple sky. I'm gonna get on my horse, my big boy horse. My horse's name is Big Boy Baby Boy. Which is kind of a weird name for them to have given the horse. And the main character's canonical name is Big Daddy. So, the canonical name of the horse is Big Daddy's Big Boy Baby Boy. Which is a little bit weird. Get owned, idiot. You too, fool. Wait, what is that? Oh, it's gone. Where's it going? I wonder what that is. Big boy, baby boy. Okay, the horse's name is not Big Boy, Baby Boy. I'm sorry, I made that up. So, as I was saying, you don't actually... Uh, you don't actually have to have played any Dragon Quest games to play this. The creators, Yuji Hori, Akira Toriyama, and uh, Koichi Sugiyama, who did the music, but I mean... They were saying, they said in, the, in an interview that this game is considered like a restarting point for the Dragon Quest series. Kill the panda and die. So, the games were, the first three games were a loose trilogy. The second three games were a sort of a trilogy. 7, 8, 9, and 10, they weren't no trilogy at all. And now 11 is is definitely a sort of a reboot. I keep pressing the left analog stick to turn the camera around. Instead of the right analog stick. Oh, check this out. It's a little village on the roadside. Seamlessly transitions to the village music. I'm a big fan of this little, uh, this little inn, too. Little roadside in. So I've seen a couple of reviews criticize the fact that the world is not oh, sausage NPC number two. They've criticized that the world is not uh, not fully, dynamically, endlessly, seamlessly open as it was in Dragon Quest VIII. Dragon Quest VIII, an interesting story, developed by level five. The world was pretty much completely open. So when you see a town in the distance, and you see its buildings, and you see the castle, that's the actual town. It's not like a level of detail model. It's the it's the actual town. However, there are loading screens when you enter the towns in Dragon Quest VIII. And the developer, level five, was quoted. Was quoted. They they, they said in an interview. Uh, that they were mere weeks away from solving the problem of having to load before going into the towns. They were weeks away. They knew exactly what to do. Exactly. In order to make it so that the game was completely seamless. Delicious cheese. This little kid's not going to die hungry. He's going to eat that stew. Let's get up in on that stew. You know what's real nice to do in real life? Is to consume some delicious stew out of a wooden bowl. I don't know about stew, but to, to consume like a delicious soup. It looks so fresh. Simple, local, rustic. This is the Gordon Ramsay rules, the three rules. Simple, four or five flavors on the plate. Local, all fresh ingredients. Rustic, something everybody knows. So that's what he's got right there. Those do look like snap peas. A little bit of tomato. Are those, are those cloves of garlic? I don't know. This PS2 looking fish here. That fish, like, man. It's, it's one thing to kill a fish to eat it, but... Do you gotta break its back after you cook it? Right? Come on! 
This nun is over here just grinning. See? <laughs> she's she's beholding the broken backed roasted fish on the table and being like, that lesser life form got it all. Ooh. <laughs> That's gonna be me tonight, if you know what I mean. That's gonna be that's gonna be me. I'm gonna be this guy. Ah, oh, fish kid. Oh, look at him. All these extra bowls and forks. Nobody here to eat. Yeah, you don't want to cut. You don't want to cut that cheese. You want to just eat it. Good old yellow Swiss. <laughs> oh, we're playing the PlayStation version of Dragon Quest XI, by the way. Uh, 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 someone with a username I can't read because it's way too like bright of a green and I know that's not your fault says you've really shown me how to truly savor a Dragon Quest game well thanks it's uh, it's all about just uh, I don't know when I see a review that's like I got all the way through it in 60 hours and I feel like I'm gonna die and I'm writing this review it's like I I really truly do advocate for I think these games are super conducive to playing the way I'm, I'm playing right now, which is just going around and getting stuff. Not even getting stuff, just talking to people. Looking at stuff. And, again, not going to spoil anything, but there's a lot going on in this game. The story's very long, and uh, it's got more than its share of twists. More than its share. So here's, here's why you hang out, is... These, uh, you'll find resources, right? So, tank it with your little hammer. Give me the stuff. I've taken to saying, give me that cheese. Every time I, I tap one of these mineral deposits. You're going to need those because you need to grind stuff. Uh, you need to craft to grind. You got to craft if you want to grind. So the grinding in this game is sort of threefold. There's, you can fight battles. Or... You can gather resources to craft better equipment. You, you can fight battles to win money to buy equipment. Though, uh, you'll notice one of the debuffs available on the Draconian Quest menu is, uh... Look at this guy. Look at this heckin' guy. One of the debuffs available to you is, uh... No, no, no shopping. You're not able to buy anything. So, I just don't shop at all when I'm playing Dragon Quest. I just, I never... I, I usually just craft stuff and get stuff that I can find. No shopping is like a classic Dragon Quest player's like self handicap. So I'm a classic Dragon Quest player, which is why I put my healer in the lead. The reason I put my healer in the lead, in case you weren't noticing, is oh this save I set I kept a lot of points. Is I put my healer in the lead because she has this one little little branch of her skill tree is to upgrade her spear attack so you can show she gets more critical hits and uh it's funny because i i've gotten her with the maximum attack power boosts that she can get to her spear which is funny uh so yeah no shopping i don't shop i craft and uh, they've got this stronger monsters handicap that's available, so you can you can put on stronger monsters if you want. I uh, I don't do that though, to be perfectly honest. I don't do it because uh, I know that in the end game and in the post game, the monsters are just they're just straight wild, man. They don't stop. Like they're horrible. They're like, they're truly terrible. And they're going to kill you. They're just, uh, those later monsters are really tough. So, I will say, as I, as I work toward this Platinum Trophy, that there is a trophy for getting a character to level 99. Uh, actually, there's seven trophies for getting each character to level 99. And the characters level up together at the end of the battle. So, that's cool. Like, uh... Did I go to the wrong... I went to the wrong campsite. That's okay. So... 
The characters will all level up to level 99, pretty much on the same pace if you keep them alive. What are you doing back here? Okay, I'll let you know, buddy. This is Snowby Town, as I call it. Need the magic key to unlock that door. Once the game opens up, once you get the boat, you can go pretty much anywhere in the game. Though you're you're gated as to I fell in the water. I wasn't paying attention, I'm sorry. I like Snowby Town. It's really chill. Get it. They've got like these aqueducts, which is neat. There's a bar. I'm not gonna go in the bar because there's like a spoiler in the bar. I don't want to spoil anything. Look how cozy. So cozy. It's dark inside. I don't know what she's doing there. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Oh, this guy's kind of chill. He's got, he doesn't have very good posture. He's got like the posture of an old man. A pre-old man. I wanted to go out into the snow fields and challenge some particularly deadly monsters. We're gonna warp there in a moment. See these old people? People, you know, people everywhere. You know, everywhere you go in this world, people do what they can to have a good time. It's cold out, right? Weather is uh, a little bit forbidding. Doesn't mean you can't have a good time. Light a fire. Kids start dancing. Dude starts clapping. And then, finally, girl starts dancing. I don't think this guy's actually playing any music. I think he's just kind of being... I don't know why she's dancing. What did she say? Traditional dancing song, huh? I don't actually hear the music. I guess Kochi Sugiyama, the music composer, is 88 years old. He couldn't be bothered to compose the dancing melody. Wonderful looking town. Beautiful city. I'm not gonna go back in there, though. Don't worry. We're gonna go ahead and exit this town. And I guess we're gonna end this very soon, because I have other stuff to do. I'm sorry. We've got a question in the chat. Do I think being able to see the monsters in the field makes the game less interesting, intense, whatever? So, this... Uh, this save that I'm on here, which is a little bit under halfway through, uh, I have brazenly ignored almost every random battle. So, I will fight random battles um, in order to fill out my monster catalog, because I want my defeated monsters list to show as many monsters as possible. However, I avoid battles almost all of the time. And it still makes, the, the game is still really long. And by avoiding battles, you end up with the bosses being just really, really hard. Like, really hard. Can't stress that enough. When you're under leveled, the bosses are real tough. And when you're an idiot like me and you force your party to be the weakest party possible. Ooh. So we got some hard dudes today. This is good. I've got them on auto battle, so show numbers. Let's see what happens when they show numbers. Here we go. Oh! So, hard dragon quest enemies have generally what they like to do is cast status effects that take somebody out of a, a turn. So you'll notice the X's by Serena and Veronica. They've been knocked down because the enemy uh, the enemy yelled. So it, it, it shocks them and knocks them down and then takes them out for a turn. You'll notice the X is blinking. That means on the next turn they're going to be coming back. With auto battle, it all goes really fast. It kind of feels like playing Pachinko. Veronica's back, casting Boom. Boom is a spell that hits everybody on screen. 
and she just owned him with an unnecessary spell, because I believe he was closer to death than he might have been. Dragonhorn, okay. Dragonhorns are pretty hard to come by. Uh, we're gonna go down here. I wanna fight some actual hard monsters. After I get some craft out. Mirror stone's hard to come by. It's a good... Did I just walk right into this guy? Okay. This shouldn't be that hard. He's gonna cast Swoosh, which only attacks a group. Managed to get two of them, missed the one. That's nothing. Peppy beat. This uh, puts all the enemies in the zone. When they're in the zone, just everything they do is just stronger. Draining my MP, that's something I don't like. I don't like when they drain my MP. Serena? Yeah. She has enough confidence in her attacking strength to know when she can take on an enemy who's on it. Uh, it has a low enough amount of HP left. Right? You did okay, buddy. Don't worry. 1495 experience points. That's kind of, that kind of sucks. Uh, it kind of sucks, but what can you expect? I'm used to getting... God dang it, I walked right into that guy again. I'm sorry. Uh, this guy's gonna die real fast, though. Thanks, Sylvando. There's a character in the game who is, like, very British. And he pronounces Sylvando. Sylvando. And I really like it, because it, it feels very much like a... A British man. Pronouncing taco as taco. Shall we get tacos? You know? Like he knows what the real pronunciation is and he just doesn't care. Oh, cool thing about camping. Well, first of all, camping's just chill. In general. Is you can uh, hang with your buds at the camp. They carry a little horse pen around. I don't know where they're carrying that. It's where the Dragon Quest Eight little wagon would have made sense. Veronica and Serena together. Eric, by himself. Just looking at his knife. Uh, this merchant shows up and just kind of chills with you. Rab is doing his Tai Chi. Martinez just always looks tired. There's a canonical reason for why she's always tired. Right? Here's my alchemy pot. I mean, my forging station. I don't want to sell anything to you, actually. I don't want you having my stuff. They sell kind of local stuff every campsite. Not every campsite has a merchant, but the ones that do, they usually sell unique stuff. A statue to save your game. And forge items. What do we got? What should I forge? I can forge a lot. Lightning lance. Platinum lance. Crikey. Should I try forging this platinum lance? Let's do it. So you need to collect a whole lot of ingredients and then you can forge listen to this dinky little music they play so we're gonna go ahead and you have okay so the way forging works is you have this focus cost that's tied to your level so as you level up your character in the game you obtain more focus you can do a bash which lets you hit one of these right you can just choose one square and that costs five focus we can do these flourishes double-edged bash will let you hit two at a time for eight points which two do you want? Who knows? Quadra Bash does a two by two, but we're not doing anything that's two by two. Lightning Bash does half strength, double whammy, double strength, triple whammy, triple strength. Sizzly Puff ups the heat. So as every turn you take, the, the temperature goes down and the temperature determines how much uh, strength you're going to attack with. So I'll do a double edge right here. And I got a critical hit, which means for some reason, now that one got more. That was a critical hit as well. It's a 40. So it was a 95, and the critical hit was a 40. You can do an appraise, which shows you what the score for each one is so far. Keep track of that. I'm going to try gently. Double edge bash. We're now at 100 degrees lower. Not bad. I'm going to do it again. Okay, so that one's now yellow. It's right in the middle. Power of next strike doubled. I'm going to use that as an advantage to hit this. Okay. I'm going to bash down here. I've crafted a couple hundred items with this, so I feel comfortable 
Power of next strike halved. That's good. Um, we got it right there. So we're gonna go ahead and do lightning on here. Crikey, really thought that was gonna do it. We're so close. We're so close and I completely failed it. I was gonna get all of them. Power of next strike doubled. Heck, I have exactly 10 points left. And that's over. Uh, it should be close enough to be perfect, though. Let's see. No, it wasn't perfect. It was just a success. So you can actually rework the item. So let's rework the item. We're going to take it from the equipment bag. And we're going to rework the Platinum Lance Plus 2. We're going to try to get it. You need to use 10 pearls. You obtain these pearls by crafting a lot of items. I can't believe I failed at this. I, I wasn't I wasn't engaged, I'm sorry. A new double-edged bash down here. And for some reason that didn't do exactly what I thought it would. I'm gonna just try to get it. Ooh, perfectly even. Not that that's anything. Power of next strike doubled. Okay. And, uh, really thought that was going to do it. Nice. Power of next strike halved. Really thought that would do it. Really thought that would do it. And I really thought that would do it as well. Looks like I'm the biggest loser. That's not going to help, man. I think I messed it up. I think I made it worse. Oh, no. Never mind. Sorry. You never know. There's a little bit of a... There's a little bit of like a... A sort of a casino element to this, because you don't always know if it's going to be better or not. I have a Platinum Lance plus three. So we can actually give that to Martina. I mean, Jade. Or we can give it to her. Because she's my... She's my main here. Ooh! Ooh, me likey. Uh, we're going to not... We're going to... You can take a look at Jade. Can have that. So I've got it with claws. Everybody has multiple weapons they can use. I'm gonna go ahead and give her. Oh, sorry, I was equipping her wrong thing. I took off her claws. I'm sorry. Yeah. She's tough as heck. She has a 257 attack. Get out of town. What does Bilby have? 203. Eric, 193. Sylvanda, 163. Because I have with a weak weapon. Yeah, Jade is a. Uh, Owns real hard. So I actually have Eric with the Falcon Blade and the Platinum Sword, which the Falcon Blade lets him attack twice, Platinum Sword lets him attack once, and Billy has a Falcon Blade and also a Platinum Sword, which allows him to attack three times as well, so we can end up fighting the heck out of some Metal Slimes. Speaking of which, should we try to kill a Metal Slime? I'm going to kill him one Metal Slime. I'm going to do it. And then we're done. Then we're done. Then i got to get out of here. Not that this isn't fun. I would rather do this all day than, than anything. Except I would rather load up my, my, my real save and uh, just grind. But it's the good grind, you know? That sweet grind. So this is it. All we're going to do. All we're going to do is kill a metal slime. And I'm gonna use my metal hunting party to show you. I have a party of metal hunters. Give me that horse. I'm gonna equip my metal hunting party to hunt for metals. And you're gonna love this. 
Uh, when I say I have a boss fighting party, uh, this party of four that I use here is just for... I, I'm, hunt, I'm fighting all the bosses. When I do my weird grinds, uh, I use this metal hunting party because they are dope. I put it in a weird order. That's good. So you'll notice they all have two weapons. So he can attack three times, she can attack twice, he can attack twice, and he can attack three times. Because remember, the Falcon Blade counts for two. So this guy right here, this is like the earliest in the game you can access this, is when you're near Galopolis. There are these dragons that are sleeping. And every once in a while, they're accompanied by metal slimes. Should be like three, a um, one in three chance. I'm going to actually just let my dudes own him. He's pretty weak. Because this is an early monster. And I'm going to run around a little bit. I'm going to murder a couple of things. And I'm going to find another one. Here's another one. He might have a metal slime. Here we go. No! Holy shnikes! Yeah, she's really Hello, strong. That was one mice. hit. These guys praying at this monument. What do they expect to happen here? Alright, give me a medal. Give me some metal. God darn it. So yeah, this is how you play. 191 from Eric. That's not bad. Yeah, let's go back over to that. I'm going to be real disappointed if I can't get a Metal Slime on stream. Also, I want to point out these are the early Metal Slimes. I don't want to show you the dungeon with... Where the heck he didn't respawn, man? He didn't respawn! I'm going to go to a place where it's more... This is the earliest place you can get them if you fight those guys. However, that dragon is really strong if he wakes up. So... If he wakes up, you're you're in a world of pain. I'm gonna show you the slightly easier place to get metal slimes. Which is actually the place I recommend. So these are the easiest metal slimes. They're regular metal slimes. They're not uh liquid metal slimes, which give ten thousand experience points. And once you can find those, those are the ones that my party is like my party is like engineered to grind those liquid metal slimes. That's this party I have right here. And it's like... Again, I've, I've progressed much further in my main save of the game. How close am I to the Platinum? I have to get every character up to level 99. Which, if you... If you farm Vicious Metal King Slimes... You can get from, like... Level 70 to level 99 in, like... Like... Five or six fights. Eight fights. I mean, you can level up, like, really hard, really fast. So these green dragons are accompanied by metal slimes. And I would recommend fighting these dudes after you get all your party members. Oh, they're also sort of sort of tough. So Billy's in the zone. He's going to get three hits. Two, three. Each character who can dual wield has a have an offhand, and their offhand is going to be weaker. So normally, if you're if you're playing this game not like a weirdo, because I'm I'm playing it definitely like a weirdo, uh, I actually think going for Billy, well, the hero's great sword ability is really neat, because he has an attack. Yeah, this attack right here, cutting edge, is really good. It does like double damage. So this is Giga Sla Giga Smash, which is related to Giga Slash, which is. His lightning sword attack that attacks everybody. I've re-rolled his skills. You can cancel your skills at a at a menu. I've been taking him not... He hasn't been using great swords and also haven't been using him much. I've got him like clearly geared just to fight metal slimes. And I'm gonna... I guess I can get this critical hit chance. Critical hit chance up plus 2%. Let's do that. So I've purchased that. So now he has 2% higher chance of getting critical hit. You can actually farm those. It's critical hit when wielding obviously, so it's not critical hit at all times. Attack power, attack power, and this is attack power as well. So, yeah, 
with great swords, I would recommend going for these great sword attacks because you can get this. This uh, what is it? This, uh, this skill, overhead swing. Like this, this does like so much damage, and it's just a one enemy, a meat and potatoes attack. And for Eric, I recommend he can get a similar skill. Anyway, let's see if we can get a medal. And this is it. Ah! Once I get a medal, we're done. Just wanna sh I just want to attack. Ooh. Wow! Eric one-shot at a green dragon. That's, another day, I guess, not that impressive. Victory. Since we're still in the first part of the game. Like I said, if you know Dragon Quest, you know that there's big twists. So, just when you think you're tough, you're not that tough. Where are the goddamn dragons? They're not refreshing. Give me that dragon, buddy. It's like, the, oh, they're, now they're back. It's like the game is trying to thwart my grind. They're trying to thwart my grind, and they're not going to do it. Also, I don't think anybody's going to level up. Ah, not bad at all. Is that really? Yeah. So the thing about these green dragons is they are very often accompanied by three metal slimes. That would have been much more dramatic if they had showed up uh, immediately after I said that. We're gonna get we're gonna get metal slimes. We're gonna do it. We are going to get it. We're going to get, we're going to, we're going to get a metal slime. Let me do a lot. There's a crafting ingredient over there. I don't need it. Because I'm not going to say. I'm just horsing around. Literally. Where's my dragons? I'm on a quest for dragons, everybody. I'm on a dragon in quest. Right. Give me that slime. Give me that slime. Man! Oh, he suddenly attacks, even though I approached him from behind. That's it? Green dragon. Oh no, that's it. Green dragons get two turns. No, uh, party members do not gain experience even if they die. Uh, if they're dead, they do not get experience. Who else wants some? <laughs> and I do not. Oh, Veronica got a level. Good work. What did she get? Cassis. Okay. I'm having a bit of a weird experience with this game because I don't know what the English spells are called. So when I get a new spell, I'm like, oh. Oh, give me a metal slime. I need... Do you like my guys attacking three times? Again, I don't really recommend you... Uh, I really don't recommend that you go for this attack three times. To get two Falcon Blades in the first half of the game is really hard, by the way. Uh, I'll just let you know that one of them is a reward for collecting 35 mini medals, so... That's not really that easy to do. Unless you're a complete, absolute psycho like me and you know exactly where they all are. Vic Red asks, uh, how am I enjoying my newfound fame? I guess I did get a bunch of new Twitter followers from that video. Hopefully those people realize that I've been doing stuff like that for like a year here. So re don't re check them all. Man, give me, give me the medals. Give me the metal slimes. The game does not want me to fight a metal slime. Crikey. Ha. Easy. Don't. Don't brag about killing an easy enemy. It's uncouth. Um, I swear to you that the, uh, 
the oh man falcon slash the likelihood of green of metal slimes showing up is like really really high with these green dragons but i think it's not giving them to me because i'm over leveled i'm over leveled for a grind in this area i promise you it's very likely that you find them we're having either incredibly poor luck or the game is intentionally not giving them to me. Despite playing so many of these games for so many years, I'm just not sure sometimes what's a hunch and what's not a hunch. It feels like metal slimes in early grind zones of the game disappear if you come back leveled up a little bit too much. So, we've got five, what is this, six green dragons now we've fought, and we haven't seen a metal slime. I, I feel like it's one in three the first time you get here. Things are looking up. Little thumbs up when you level up, I like that. Oh, Sylvando's not here, so nobody thumbs ups for him. We're going to fight two more dragons, and if we don't find a metal slime, I'm taking him head on. I can't believe there's no metal slimes. That's me right now, because of the no metal slimes. West Wright says, I've never seen a metal slime with a green dragon in my life. Are you sure? Because uh, in Dragon Quest XI, I mean, in my tips video... You can see, you can clearly see three metal slimes and a green dragon uh, in a party together. And they are having a party together. I believe the game fears my prowess. Like I said, there's so much unconfirmed to me. I don't know if it's, if it's a hunch that the game is holding the metal slimes back because it doesn't want me to get them too easily. I'm about to straight up lose my bonkers, everybody. I'm about to straight up lose my bonkers if I don't see a metal slime. I know where to go for liquid metal slimes, but I'm not going to show you that. Because that zone is too cool. No matter how easy the enemy was, a critical hit still feels good. I'm glad you didn't say anything, Eric. That was good. I didn't want him to be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Because, I mean, you should only pity the enemy who you've one shot. You know what I mean? It's a little pleasant horse run. You do not need to get all of the mini medals in order to unlock the trophy. Um, so to get the final reward, uh, there there are, I will say there are a lot of extra mini medals, like a lot. Um, in the post game, there's like a way to farm mini medals. You can actually get like an infinite supply, but it's really, it's kind of hard. The trophy is complete three pages of the mini metal, uh, the mini metal stamp book. And now we're, now we're, uh, I see people in the chat now, uh, they believe that the metal slime is a lie. Well, that was easy. Jade, you don't brag about what was easy. That's not nice. She spoke that sardonically. Trek, 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 Trek asks, are the mini medals just for buying endgame stuff? Um, mini medals, if you don't know what they're for yet, uh, you'll know 
Eventually. Eventually it will be made very clear to you. Uh, not only will it be made very clear, it's it's made kind of psychedelically way too clear to you. Like, the, the clarity of what you're supposed to do with the mini metals is... It's quite extravagant, I would say. In every Dragon Quest. But in this some? one, far, <laughs> far much more. Uh... Anybody who's... Has, has anybody in the chat played the game and gotten to the point of Mini Metal Redemption? I was blown away by that the first time I saw it. The Mini Metal Redemption point. You know what? I'm gonna fight one more dragon and then I'm out of here. I just want to say, first time you get this, you're at this point in the game. These green dragons are hard, man. They're like, they're like legit hard. Like, oh yeah. Oh, that's a good thumbs up from here. Good work. I don't want my guys to level up. I want them to stay under leveled. I want them to be children forever. Being on a horse does not change encounters now. One more. We're doing one more dragon, and if there's no metal slime, I'm done. I'll go attempt to do one liquid metal slime. So much for the dragon quest. Serena silently gains a level. I can't believe we didn't find any metal slimes. My sweet children. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm, I'm gonna try to take us to one more. I'm, I, uh. I'm gonna try to take us to a zone that has liquid metal slimes because I just want to I want to prove to somebody that my cool strategy looks cool it's not my strategy I mean a lot of people have this strategy just don't just ignore this town if you don't want to see a town I love this town it's one of my favorites it would make a good quake map I mean, this is the majority of Dragon Quest playing. Just running around watching your dudes fight monsters that you don't really care about. Everybody really wants to see a metal slime. And I don't blame them. I had goals for this stream. It was to show you an outfit. I've done that. It was to uh, show you a couple of towns. I've done that. Show you some cool NPCs. We bonkered on that. Played a little bit of Double or Nothing. Lost it all. Unlocked a treasure. Piece of cloth. And then I was going to show you my metal hunting strategy. And... Now, uh... Now... I'm not... I'm not getting any. Okay, so... Every time I've played the game, this guy has had liquid metals with him. <gasps> no. God dang it! Kill him. Yeah, these enemies are going to take more than two or three hits. But that. Ooh. Rab. Wait, Rab, don't, don't do anything. Don't do anything stupid, man. Come on. Ah, oh, she's cursed. That didn't really help much. No, hey, 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 don't go anywhere. That guy was my meal ticket. These guys are accompanied frequently by liquid metal slimes. Or by two clones of themselves. Oh, Jade is still cursed. Let me go ahead and mix this up. What does the curse do? Eh, you'll find out. 
He's dead. Bilby? That's not what I wanted him to do, but I guess I could have just programmed him myself. So, this is a classic Dragon Quest trick, is I... I decursed her using Rab's, uh... I didn't want to pick the spell myself. I press the triangle button which calls up the tactics menu and it will interrupt the battle at your next turn. I put him on focus on healing. I'm going to put him on don't use MP. And uh, that'll have him just do physical attacks. These guys are really making it hard. Bilby, can you please... Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> never mind. I guess he's not going to... He's just standing there having a bad time. Oh no, Rab's having a bad time. Anybody ever play Skies of Arcadia here in this chat? Uh, in Skies of Arcadia, there's like these enemies that look like little onions. And like all they do is uh, like fight them inside of like some big purple storm zone. And all they do is like cast a paralysis spell on you. And if you like kill the enemy that they're like partnered with. You end up just Don't having enemies all. who all they can do is paralyze you. And you're just like... You're just... Ah! Dang it! I gotta say, this is this is a rough formation uh, to have. Like, this is a... No, not, not per se. This is a rough formation, man. Uh, yeah, all Dragon Quest games since Dragon Quest IV have had, have had auto battle. I kind of pioneered it as a thing. Okay, that was good. Veronica? Uh, no? I guess Veronica came in a little too late to do anything. Yeah, the slimes clearly know that we're watching. Up. Don't you run from me. God dang it! Oh, they suddenly attack even though I slashed him in the back. Those weird onions, man. Why aren't there ever... Ooh, see... She knew that he only... She knew exactly how many hit points he had left, so she knew that Easy. she had enough strength to take him out. I have her set to show no mercy. By all rights, she would have casted a spell if the AI were stupider than it actually is. So, pretty smart AI. I'm pretty sure the stream... The, the game knows that I'm streaming. It's gotta be. These guys don't have liquid metals with them. Let's find out. Buddy. Veronica killed them all. Oh no, Billy. Ooh. They should have brought it back up. Okay, victory in 500 battles. He doesn't have liquid metals. I really want to kill a liquid metal slime. Why can't I find them? Nobody knows when this game is coming out for the Switch. The Switch was the first platform they announced it for. They announced that it's come back when they it was called the Nintendo NX. They said, Dragon Quest XI is coming to the Nintendo NX. And then nothing concrete since then. So it's coming. At last, uh, the last update was that they were changing to a new version of Unreal. I can't believe I can't find any metals. Crikey. It's a weird buffet right here. Boom. 
Yeah, that's something to do, I guess. Sometimes my guys do stuff that I wouldn't have done. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, you stay gone, punk. Okay, yeah. The only reason I fought them is because I can ride this guy now. Uh, I'm <laughs> gonna ride this guy around. That's a box. I already got that box. You guys like my horse. He doesn't really do much. He just makes you go a little faster in the dungeon. The Japanese version didn't have the sprint feature. So, these little things were fun to have. I want to find those zombie guys. So, those zombie guys in this room. Man, oh man. All I want is my darned metal. I just want to kill a vicious idiot. And together... Enjoy the taste of metal. Yeah, this dungeon's kind of aggravating. I like it, though. I sort of know my way around this dungeon, because I farmed metals here. Out of my way, chump. Out of my way, fool. <laughs> Can't chump this guy. All right, let's see if he's got any medals. Ah, give me the medal. Give me the medal. As you progress through a Dragon Quest game, uh, as you progress through a Dragon Quest game, the monsters become more and more sinister looking. So these monsters are slightly sinister. Obviously. Still charming, but sinister. That's kind of the whole appeal. So if you think the monsters look too cute in the beginning of the game, it's because the game is just playing soft with you. Oh, check this out. Murder Alley. Oh. Not exactly a Dark Soulsian enemy placement. Ah! All I need is a stupid little puddle of mercury with a happy face on it. That's all I need. You Another did it. One bites the dust. No, don't talk about what they bit. That's mean. Oh, heckarino. Uh, sorry. Let's find. Wow. I touched, I touched him. I touched him. And I really, 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 really thought this was gonna happen much faster. Get him, Eric. Oh, now she's just being mean. Wow. That was sick. Her magic staff that I crafted for her. I didn't craft it, I, I got that the hard way. It, uh,. It boosts her magic attack power like super crazy. I love how I'm just sitting here playing Dragon Quest, but this is like a save that I'm going to have to re-roll. I'm going to have to not save it. I'm not going to save it. I'm just going to roll up my, my real save when I get home. And I'm going to keep grinding, wearing my cool outfits. I don't even know who these people are because they're not wearing the cool outfits that I have them all wearing. Oh, there actually is a Kotaku XP. It's, uh, it's going to go up at 4 p.m. It was filmed yesterday. So don't worry. That's It's going to happen. But I definitely have to leave within the next 10 minutes. Because I have to post it on the website. And as you know, why roast when you can post? Post. 
Okay. So, the reason H Core fans love it here is you can uh, you get this. It's a it's a restoring statue. So that statue restores your HP MP, and you can metal grind right here. And these guys occasionally have metals. You picked the wrong buddy. I'm gonna do three fights. I'm gonna do three of them. And if I don't find any medals, we all cry. Wow, he doesn't have any energy. Oh yeah. I like these enemies. These are your, your typical Dragon Quest demon enemy. Okay, give me one more. Just gonna wait for the... These guys occasionally are accompanied by... Oh, no, no, no! Oh! That's something like a... Oh my god. Crikey. Oh, okay, thank you. So the hero has a little voice, a little linky voice when he, when he zones up. And it's like... I'm sorry, let me put you in. Let me at him! Ah, oh, heck. So Zing has a 50-50 chance of reviving. It missed. Oh, heck. Rab, I'm gonna put you on healing as well. Okay. What was that supposed to be? All right, Bilby. 50-50, flip that coin. There we go. She's back. Everybody kill. Now, Rab's gonna heal her because he's set to focus on healing. I can't... Post Kotaku XP and then stream more because I'm also working on a video. So I have to work on the video, which has to be done at like 7 p.m. Well, that's the deadline I set for myself. God darn it. I just want to kill metal slimes. Let's face it, I don't know where they are. I'm going to show everyone. Okay, just look. See? Look at that. There he is. Look at that little guy. See? 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 That's him. Look at that buddy. Look at that weird... If you've got a buddy, you've got a friend. You know? Love this guy. But by god darn, where is he? We're going to go for one more demon. Uh, Mr. Demon, where are you? I got to say, I really, really wish I could just find a demon. If you've got a buddy, you've got a friend. You guys got any metal slimes with you? They're not going to have one. I can't believe they're gone. Maybe the only place to find them is in the dungeon that I want to avoid. Ha! Huh. Easy. Easy, huh? One more demon we fight, and then I must go. I mean, I just, I can't. I can't believe there's no demon. I believe in demons. Ugh. See, he's got the, he's got the god darn snail face thing now. Crikey! How many, that was, wow, that was a lot of damage for this part of the game. That was good. Don't you dare. Yeah, it looked like it was strong.
but you are in fact a fool. Actually, I keep it on the metal party. I'm gonna keep my metal party going. When the metal shows up, you will have to disengage auto battle. That was that looked like something, but it actually wasn't Jade. You should have just hit him. I love how these guys have like this weird cod piece. Who else wants some? Again? Oh, I'm fitter than ever. Fitter than ever? Is that what you'd really say? Um. Uh, we're gonna put it on free form five. Hold on. And I'm gonna get off the horse so that I can stab this guy. My bonkers are slipping through my fingers. Oh, so here's the freeform camera. You just kind of run around and it doesn't actually do anything. They can still hit you. Billy can't stab. Another Billy day, wasted them. Another victory. Billy derailed their school bus. I'm gonna leave my stupid horse there. Yeah, I believe that overleveling has prevented the metal slimes from appearing. I think that's that's got to be it. And that's it. This is the last one. I'm sorry, everyone. We're just too level because I killed too many metal slimes for the purpose of making my video about metal slimes. They're in here, though. The liquid metal slimes is the first place where you'll find liquid metal slimes in the game. The way the metal slimes are set up is when you encounter them, they're just in a place that, like, if you kill a couple of them, everybody will be leveled up and you'll all be, like, super current with, like, whatever sort of a... Whatever sort of a moment you're at in the story, whatever boss you're, like, ready for, there's, like... Metal slimes show up just in time to kill two or three of them. I guess they really just, uh, yeah, there's got to be something. I mean, this just goes to show for how uh, how ignorant I am about grinding in this game. Because like, I, I don't grind. I just don't grind. Here's the, uh, the first big city you encounter in the game. Beautiful, beautiful town. Beautiful Heliodor, as it's called. Beautiful back alleys, beautiful tunnels. Well, we all had a good time watching me not find a metal slime. I'm sorry there was no metal slime. Uh, I have no, I have no other excuse to make for myself. I could have, I know, where I could have shown them to you, but I didn't want to spoil anything. You got to understand. Oh well. There's no metal slimes. I feel like Geraldo opening Al Capone's vault. There's nothing in there. Anyway, thanks for checking this out. Stay tuned for my Kotako XP. It's coming up. We talk about Spider-Man. I mean, sort of. I didn't play Spider-Man because I've got this. I can be the real Spider-Man. You know what I mean? You need Spider-Man when you've got what I'm about to do. See? Spider-Man can't do this. Ah, oh, heck. I went the wrong way. I'm still here. I didn't turn it off yet. I'm sorry. Wasn't I making a Fortnite video? Oh, yeah. There's a Fortnite video, but that's... That's a long-term project. That's no simple video. There's plenty of people out there making Fortnite videos. I can't just be a normal Fortnite video maker. I gotta do that, you know, that's something extra. Uh, it's gonna be a lot extra. I just jumped really far down. I just love hanging out in this town. This is a good town. Uh, 
just ran into this. Get off of that. I feel like you run too fast. And guess what? I love it. These guys, they're chill. Everybody's chill in this game. Except the bad guy. That guy's not chilled out at all. Anyway. Good night, everyone. I will die now. Let's actually just do this. There you go. We're done. Bye.